What's up, guys? This is Mark. What up? This is Devin. Hey, guys. It's been about a week and a half now. Actually, two weeks. Sorry, we got a little off track and a lot going on in our uh, personal lives. So we send our sincere apologies. We're, uh, yeah. Not really. Really sorry. No, but you know what? We're going to be doing, we're going to be changing it up a little bit. Look, we want to provide you guys with more amazing content more regularly. Um, you know, when I say more regularly, we've been doing once a week, but we're going to do every other week now moving forward. This is going to give us time to curate some amazing interviews, get together a bunch of great information to provide to you guys, and just make the whole podcast a much, much better listening experience. That's right. We're going to be doing a lot more interviews and kind of going around the local community and finding cool new spots for you guys, uh, meeting people that you might want to hear about, uh, celebrity guests, just uh, kind of fun stuff. So let's do it. All right. So tuning back in to Vibe LA episode, episode 19. 19. Your weekly breakdown on all the hottest stuff happening across the city from music to entertainment, sports, nightlife, Real culture, estate, culture, fashion, music, and so literally everything. Much more. And that's it. All right. So moving forward, after this week, we're going to be bringing you Vibe LA sessions with special guests of the week, every other week. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. And in this episode, we're going to be interviewing No Etiquette. This is Mark and Eddie Brusso's, you know, DJ group, producers. What do you call your guys? Uh, no Etiquette. No Etiquette. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. So basically, we're going to be discussing how to make it in the music business, right? So a lot of people come out to LA, you know, whether it's, you know, trying to be an actor, a model, a sports mogul, a musician. And there's a lot of clutter and noise to kind of break through and a lot of bullshit you got to deal with to actually go to the source. So that's what we want to do. Break it down. These guys have been having a lot of success recently in a really, really short amount of time. So I uh, want to continue riding that out and seeing what it takes. All right, guys, let's kick it off. Let's, let's go. Skill it up. All right, guys. So let's say I'm a brand new you know, musician. I have novice level talent just moving out to L.A., and I want to try to make it big, right? Like, this is my dream. I didn't go on American Idol. I didn't go and fucking DJ in college my whole life. But I'm trying to, like, make it out here in the music business. Where do I start? What do I do? Okay. So let's say uh, you're trying to do... Let's just do electronic dance music because that's what we do. And that's the best we can, you know, really... Perfect. Give you. Okay. All right. So let's say that you're trying to be a producer. You want to play your songs out. You know, get huge festivals. Make a lot of money. Party forever. Have fun. Uh, I would say the best the best thing to do is probably get a DAW, which is a digital audio workspace. Uh, that's more fun. Hold on. No Before that, it's important to say connections are everything. Okay, okay. So, anyways, you're going to get a DAW. So, you're going to get Ableton, Logic, Cubase, Reason, uh, Fruity Loops, for all your PC users, whatever it may be. Uh, we use Ableton, so we recommend that one. And uh, what are some? I mean, what are some of the differences between the two? You don't have to get very technical right now, but I mean, what's going to be more of an entry level slash like the most ro most robust program out there? Well, I mean, compare it like iMovie versus like fucking Final Cut Pro, right? Well, so there's like the big three. There's Logic, which is by Apple. There's Ableton, and there's FL Studio. And honestly, you can do the same thing in all of them. You can make great tracks in all of them. It really just comes down to personal personal preference. It really just comes down to personal preference. Um, also, it's important to see like if you have friends that are producing, what are they producing on? Because it makes it a lot easier if you guys have the same DAW and you're all producing on the same DAW, which is a digital audio workshop. Okay, so once I have this DAW, um, what do I do next? I mean, do I go on YouTube? Am I, you know, researching how to make cool sounds? Are there, you know, do I just link up with friends or try to network and find people in the business who can help me? Do I go to school? What what the fuck do I do at this point? Okay, so uh, whenever Eddie and I first started, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of funny. Whenever you first start, you you, you know, you get your your workspace, you get your computer, you you're, you sit down, you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this, and, you, and then you're like, what you don't do, do anything. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? You here? make it look all pretty. You yeah. get a marble background, and so, then what? So uh, one big thing, you know, and just starting off in kind of like going through everything and trying to figure out if this is what you want to do is YouTube tutorial videos. I mean, there's, there's great sound design videos that are base level entry. They kind of give you some steps, tips and tricks. And even uh, if you have a certain song, you want to recreate a sound in that, they have uh, tutorials on that. Uh, that's one big thing to do. Another thing that we were kind of late to the game too is downloading sample packs. I mean, these sample packs have so much stuff like uh, drums, you have synthesizers, you have uh, presets, which are sounds that you can put inside of your DAW. I'm trying to speak 
like the most basic I can. And um, I mean, it's, it's just a really big resource. So aside from doing YouTube tutorial videos, I would recommend downloading Splice, which is seven ninety nine a month. And then you get, it's, it's like a hundred credits a month and you get to download samples. And you can pick and choose from any sample you want from different types of pack, hip hop. You can do, um, you can do like really old school stuff too. You can do drum and bass. You can do um, house. You can do pretty much honestly anything really. And they have a ton of samples and resources. So that's probably the very base level of starting out. Um, Eddie, what about schools? What would you recommend? Yeah, well, before I talk about schools, I was going to say just it's really important to get to know your DAW first and just start messing around Learn with your it. DAW! Learn your DAW. Just start messing around with it. Get comfortable. Know where everything is. Um, but yeah, about schools. I mean, schools are, they're pricey, but it's a great place to to really like get a huge head start. You know, you get to talk to people that that have experience in the industry and know a lot more than you. You know, they've been doing this for years and they have a lot of expertise and you can pick their brain. Mentors, yeah, it's a great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So in LA, if I'm, you know, a new aspiring DJ slash producer slash electronic music, you know, fiend, um, what are what are some of the best schools out there that I can look into and, you know, give a, give a shout out? I'll take this one, Mark. <laughs> you answer, there, Eddie went to the Harvard. Well, let's let's, let's, give, let's give him some there, let's give him some, I, okay, some history first. Give, some history first. So, yeah. so starting off uh, right out of high school, I went to uh, Musicians Institute in Hollywood, which is great for audio engineering. I learned a lot of stuff about how to mix and master, and more 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 importantly, how to work in the studio, which is cool. Um, and then Eddie also went to a school called SAE, which is like the same thing really. And then from there. Eddie went over to another school that he's going to talk about in a second. And that's the one that we really recommend. And that's the one that we're really going to hit heavy on in this question. Yeah. So there are a lot of uh, music production schools out there and uh, audio engineering schools. Um, but really the best one out there, and I might just be really biased about this, but it's from our personal experience and the list of like incredible alumni that come out of there and, you know, go on to like DJ the biggest festivals in the world is Icon Collective. Give us some of those those names that were that were in the, the Yeah, so uh, Icon Collective. If if you guys know dance music, you'll know these names. It's Jaws went there, Nightmare went there, Slander went there, Sunburn went there, Kazo went there. The, I mean the list goes on. They have a huge chalkboard uh, of all the like notable alumni that come through there. Okay. So Let's like peel it back now. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I'm a big advocate of YouTube and like trying to figure stuff out on your own. And, you know, a lot of these younger DJs that we're seeing kind of coming out of the weeds, they're, I mean, 13, 14. I'm assuming they don't have the access or the ability to go to these schools, which are a great option. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to like smash on them. Um, I'm trying to look at, um, you know, so for the, you know, new novice, like let's say someone's just coming out to LA. They don't have a lot of resources. Money. They don't have a lot of connects or, you know, necessarily money. Um, what are, you know, some of the quickest ways to kind of saturate yourself and just not only, you know, on the technical side of things, but really get out there and, you know, get your name out there, get connected, get plugged into kind of the culture out here. So one of the biggest things, and we kind of touched base about it uh, earlier, is connections. And there's a saying that, we, that Eddie and I say, and it, it's, it's not necessarily the music you make, but it's the hands you shake. So obviously... I like that. Right? So obviously you got to have good music, of course, that speaks for itself. But you could have someone who makes decent music, but they know the right people, and they're going to blow up. And you can have someone who makes incredible music who doesn't know anyone, and they're kind of introverted, and they're, they're not going to blow up, and they're not going to go anywhere. Completely. So, you know, I, I want to bring it back now for, you know, you guys are specialists, and, you know, you're killing the game in the electronic, you know, spectrum right now, right? On the electronic side of things. So for your, you know, other musicians, though, I mean, whether you're, you know, a guitarist or you're a singer... I mean, it really comes down to tra kind of translating what they were talking about is really honing your craft, kind of becoming a master at what you're doing. So whether you're, you know, going to guitar classes, voice lessons, learning on YouTube, singing in front of your friends, going out and just kind of cultivating these relationships with people out there as well, you know, just kind of take it and put it, you know, utilize the information that these guys are giving you and put it in your own direction, right? To do whatever it takes to make you uh, successful in that way. So, okay, so in terms of getting out there, I mean, where do I start? So I'm looking, you know, I, I'm working on my craft, right? I'm going out to, let's say, I don't know, do I go to a coffee bar? Do I go to, you know, different electronic events? 
like for other musicians? Am I going to kind of singing events or like wh- wh- where do I begin? Yeah, well, that depends on like the type of music that you're you're making and you're getting into. Uh, say if you're a DJ, you go to a you know club where they're playing the relevant music to what you're doing. Um, if you you know play guitar or you're in a band, go to places where they have a lot of bands playing. Um, but we started really making connections uh, at the school that I went to, Icon Collective, and also when we uh, started. Um, releasing music, just reaching out to big names and like sending them our demos and things like that. And we were lucky enough to uh, have some big names uh, find us and like find our music through SoundCloud just randomly. Um, And then they reached out to us and things have been going well from there. Well, so let me hop in real quick. So you said SoundCloud. So this is distribution, right? So you definitely want to get your content out there. I mean, when you're sending these demos, what are, what are you really sending and who are you sending it to? How do you find these people? I mean, all this information is, is just accessible to anyone that's at the tip of your, at the edge of your fingertips. Uh, just go on the internet and, and type in an artist's name or maybe their website and there'll be a little spot where it says uh, promos or maybe a blog, which is a huge one that we've been having success with. Or maybe it's a label. Uh, you're just going to reach out to these people, send them your music, follow the instructions. And one big thing to do is make sure that you have your sound pretty much given to them on a golden platter. You want to make sure that it's, it sounds great. It sounds killer. Uh, this doesn't take time and, and energy and effort to make it sound like everyone else's really. I mean, as far as like sonically wise. And um, one big thing we saw great success in is reaching out via messages in the SoundCloud uh, app or website. And then also we saw a big success in Twitter too. I don't know why. Really, Twitter. I, I don't know why. I, I think maybe because Twitter is a little bit more exclusive. I, I don't. I don't know what it is, but they seem to, re- to people seem to reply more on Twitter. Twitter is more of like a direct link to the artist. A lot of the a lot of artists actually manage their own like Twitter profiles. It's different than Facebook or something like that, where they'll have maybe a manager that does all of that stuff for them. But a lot of these guys, they're on Twitter themselves. That's actually super. Inf- that's like actually really good information. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. When you're, you know, reaching out and sending these guys, I mean, is it a game of numbers at this point? Is it a game of kind of like quality over quantity? How, I mean, how are you really conveying what you're sending? Are you just sending them a file? Be like, yo, check out my shit. Or are you like, kind of like you're walking down Venice. There's guys, hey, check out my mixtape. And they're putting their (laughs) headphones over your head. Like nobody wants to deal with that. I'm sure these guys' inbox get bombarded. How do you stand out and kind of break through the rest of the clutter of the noise? I'd say it's definitely quality over quantity. Um... You, it's really important to like have your sound pretty much there when you start sending stuff out. Because if if you're sending them something that they don't like or they think it, not even that they don't like, but but that is just really amateur sounding, they can get turned off from you for you know for a while. Um, and also, I wanted to to say it's really important to be as professional as you can in your emails. Um, I mean, it's the music industry. There's a, people have a lot of fun. They mess around, you know. They curse and things like that. But when you're like emailing somebody, especially for the first time, you got to be really professional. You know, you got to approach them like it's a business and be really formal. Check that spell check. So <laughs> let's say, um, okay, you guys have had a lot of luck. Um, you guys have actually, well, I, look, I, I never, I don't believe in luck. I'm not like a big luck person, but at the same time, it's like kind of being in the right place at the right time and having the right, you know, oomph to bring to the table, so to speak. So for somebody who, let's say, has, you know, good content, right? They're, they may not be the best of the best, but they're making good stuff. They're kind of on track to potentially become something. You know, if they're not getting responses, I mean, what what do you do? So, I mean, are there other ways to reach out rather than just, you know, messaging somebody on Twitter? I mean, would you recommend like, you know, maybe reaching out to someone that they know who's maybe a little more accessible to kind of help you build a relationship with them so they can pass their stuff along? I mean, what are some other ways to get your stuff out there? One thing that we noticed was just being really active on social media. We noticed that the, this huge DJ named Gasly was, uh, he, he sent out a tweet saying, hey, you know, I feel like it's my responsibility partly to help uh, other artists out who are trying on the come up to, to come up. Sure. And so send me some of your music and you know we'll see uh, we'll see if I like it and if I do I'll repost it. So we we're like, oh my gosh, yes. So we, we sent him our music and then our friends saw that and then they also sent him the same music 
which led him to actually repost it and then even play it out at festivals like, like Ultra, which is just, it's just fascinating. And if someone doesn't reply to you, please don't bombard them with the same, the same request. Just move on from that and send them something else. And aside from all of that, one thing that really helps is uh, looking for promotional blogs, looking for something that may be able to help you out as far as uh, reposting your song, or maybe there's a sub-label of a label that is looking for new music. Just sending your stuff off to absolutely everyone at the same time, it's a numbers game, really. People, people, someone will say yes if it's really good quantity. I mean, if really good quality. <laughs> also, um, if you don't get a response from, of course, don't bombard them, but if you don't get a response from the artists, usually their, uh, their uh, management will have an email that you can reach out to. And a lot of times their management is really nice about responding. You know, that's their job. They're on top of it a lot more than a lot of these artists are. And, you know, they can pass on uh, your music to the artists that they're managing or something like that. And it's important to say that, uh, well, it's important just to mention that you should like begin, you're probably not going to get a response from a really big artist. So it's important to send yourself off to artists that are around your same level or a bit bigger and start making uh, connections and networks with them, you know, collaborating with them on projects and like growing. Just build relationships. Yeah, and, like, and build something yourself. And be cool. Don't, don't be weird about it. Just, just be yourself and, and, and approach these people normally. And if you're kind of chill and just, Easy going. A lot of people react really well to that. That's cool. Okay, so l taking it back again, I want to make this, you know, not only specific to the electronic world as well, but I mean, a lot of what you guys are saying, especially just reaching out and being authentic and just, you know, coming from a good place and just trying to, you know, be respectful of people's times. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, being eager and being, you know, dedicated and motivated to promote your stuff. So, I mean, you could do this. If you're a singer, you know, send your samples. If you're a writer, you know, send your stuff out to the different labels, to the different, you know, they're going to respond to you. I mean, I have a couple of friends in the music business and they're very open. And these, you know, guys are higher up and they're definitely very open to hearing anything and everything. Because if they're recommend, look, if, they, if someone recommends somebody to them and then that person's recommended by somebody else, people are taking cuts out of this, like all the way through the line. If they get an artist direct to them and they're the one that not only is able to manage them from the get-go, but be the one that discovered them as well, there's a lot more, you know, interest on that side as well, right? It looks good on them. It looks good on you. And it's a lot cleaner and quicker that way. One important thing is, is to be consistent with your, with your, your projects. Eddie and I, we waited seven years to, to really find our sound and to really hone in on what we really wanted to do. And as soon as we did, we started releasing stuff every two weeks, consistently, religiously, every two weeks. Because people notice that consistency and they, re they start to rely on it. And it, it shows. And, and, and fans will respect that. And it, so will other artists and labels and blogs. And just the world respects that. They do. And hey, look, I mean, once you, you're building up these relationships, you're getting people talking, the more, you know, I guess, the more you're releasing stuff. I mean, two weeks is awesome. If you can do it even more frequently, good on you. Yeah. I mean, the idea is you're producing content. You want to get everything out there. The odds of somebody hearing something good, sharing that with somebody else are much greater, you know, with the more content you're producing. So, you know, once you're down the line and you have, let's say, I don't know, you have like a few hundred songs or something, it could be years, you know, of you working on this. Hopefully it doesn't have to take that long, but you know, it may. Um, it's just about keeping up with the game. You know, you can go back, kind of clean out some stuff that isn't necessarily representative of, you know, the image or the sound you're trying to portray today. But again, it's just about producing content. I mean, that's how everybody's making it these days. I mean, mm -hmm. content is fucking king. It always will be. And on, you know, placement matters and everything. But YouTube, look at these big YouTube celebrities. They're just pushing shit out. I mean, the big successful ones didn't even have great videos or content in the beginning, but they're religious. They were releasing stuff literally every day. Well, it's like brand awareness. You know, they're bombarding people with stuff and people just know the name. You know, it gets out there. And yeah, I mean, it's just people look, people like engaging. They like following something. They like being the one where they can be like, hey, I discovered these guys. I'm checking this stuff out and I want to share with my friends. You look cool. You look like the influencer. You look like you're in the know. And I mean, it just, it's good stuff. <laughs> you guys, uh, on a side note, before we wrap it up, we're, are we wrapping it up here between us? Yeah, let's wrap it up. All right. So uh, actually our track, the Sucra, we dropped it, I think an episode or two episodes ago, is getting played on Sirius XM on... Uh, Zed's Dead's radio mix, Dead Beats by our, our homie Lick. 
And uh, we're super excited about that. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be it's gonna be dropped this Thursday on Sirius XM, I believe on channel 52. And that's it, guys. We are wrapping it up. No etiquette and vibe LA stepping out. Thanks, No Etiquette. Thanks, Eddie Brusso and Mark Raider. Let's go. Everyone in the village is speaking about the monster. The jungle demon? Now don't tell me you're taking all this seriously.